Testing, there we go. Ah, okay. <laughs> we will go with the flow. Wonderful. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, we gotta get bring some heat up in here with our energy. All right. Millie, you wanna get your coat? Somebody, okay, somebody's getting it for you. <laughs> I would get mine, but it's long and I might. But anyway, I'll just move around and get the energy going here. All right, well, this is another Sunday, and the sun is coming out, and we're closer to warmer weather. You know, I got the word from God. He's working on it. Okay? Well, in the meantime, let's open our service as we always do by giving God the glory, giving God all the praise and blessing those that we know that are in need of prayer and upliftment. And then I will open up in prayer and then we will call off their names, putting it into the universe. Because God already knows, but we're putting it out there anyway because we know that when we speak the word, it goes forth and does a mighty work because we are co-creators with God. Okay, just close your eyes for a moment. Father, Mother, everything God. We bless you. We give thanks for this glorious day today. We don't know what it's going to hold for us, but we know that it's good and very good because many of us have declared it when we woke up this morning. Divine order is the order for the day, and we claim it, name it, good and very good, as God did when he created everything. And we, being co-creators and the children of God, emulate those words. Good and very good. Blessing all those that are in need of prayer and calling off those names and institutions. Blessings. Blessings. USA, blessings. Marty, blessings. The Constitution of the United States, blessing. Our Congress, blessing. The cities, blessing. The cities that we live in, blessings. Our homes, blessings. Our families, blessings. Our loved ones, our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, some of us, blessings. Blessing Greg today and Peg, blessings. And as we get still for a moment here, turning that in to ourselves and just expressing our gratitude to God for us. Thank you, God, for me this day. Thank you, God, for me this day. Last week I may have been in the hospital, but today I'm here. Last week I may have gone through some challenge, but right now that is, I'm an overcomer, and that is a memory. Thank you, God, for you in my life, because I know as long as I got you and you got me, we've got it covered. In the name and through the power of Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. Mm, all right. What is our first hymn for today? Oneness on page 211. The hymnals are in the back of the seats there. Oneness. 
2.11. Okay, she's playing the melody for us that may not know it. nothing to fear I now let go there's nothing to fear I now let go there's nothing to fear I now let go I now let go there's nothing to fear got the melody I realize there's only one power <laughs> I realize there's only one power. I realize what? There's only one power. I realize, I realize there's only one power. What else do you realize? I realize I'm one with the one. Oh, wonderful. I realize I'm one with the one. I realize I'm one with the one. I realize, I realize I'm one with the one. Isn't that sweet? Do you realize that for yourself? All right now, speak it, speak your truth. Now I will want someone to read the daily word for today. Maybe not right now, but a volunteer. Well, look it over. And the word for the day is what? You haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Overcomer. Right, look it over. We'll have you come up in a minute. Wonderful. He's just visiting for the first time today, so we'll honor him later. And stepping in already. <laughs> Wonderful. Because God is good. And all the time. Do you mean that? Do you know that for yourself? Yes, every day in every way, I am better and better. For only God's good happens to me and through me. Oh, wonderful. Went by my brother's house yesterday and, and his wife was complaining about things. I said, excuse me, last time I was here I gave you an affirmation to memorize. Did you do it? She said, well, what is it? Every day, in every way, she said, I am better and better. I said, well, now claim that rather than what you're talking about right now. You know, because you're co-created with God. If you're talking about dis-ease or all these pains or whatever you're talking about, you're co-creating that, more of it. Let go and let God. It's something we have to learn. But anyway, let's stand and affirm our statement of being. We are spiritual beings having a spiritual experience in a spiritual universe. Together, God is all both invisible and visible. This presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am an individualized expression of God. I am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. And on the back of the bulletin, our purpose and mission statement together. The purpose of Unity East Church is to teach the universal principles of truth as taught and demonstrated by Jesus Christ and interpreted by Unity. Our mission is to rediscover the guiding spirit of God's presence within us and willingly demonstrate his creative purpose in our lives 
And we all have the same bulletin today, so we can all with power affirm the front page here. Together, there is one God, the Father, all things come from him, and we belong to him. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. Wonderful. All things. Not half, not three quarter. All things. Now our second hymn is the Song of Faith on page 156. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. The terror that confound me Vanished that lay like mist before the sun Knowing his arms are evermore around me What need I fear? What perils need I shun? I shall not fail, nor shall my task appall me. Though it may seem too heavy for my hands, I know that he who knew the task did call me will give me strength to meet the task demands. All right. I shall not want, how should thou, thou assail me? Knowing his wealth is infinite indeed. How could I think his love would ever fail me? Or dream his bounty would not meet my need? Lonely. I shall not fail, nor shall my task appall me. Though it may seem too heavy for my hands, I know that he who to the task did call me will give me strength to meet the task demand. Now, give me one word. Love. Turn to your neighbor and say, good morning, love. <laughs> good morning, love. <laughs> good morning, love. <laughs> it's called audience participation. <laughs> good morning, love. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. All right, all right. That's so much stuff up here. Where is the... Oh, here it is. Ah, wonderful. The green sheet? The green sheet. We're in the month of March, okay, 2015. And the power is strength 
and that is in the nape of our back, right here. And the color is what? Light green. I got some green on here somewhere, everywhere. Uh, the location is in the loins, okay? And our strength uh, affirmation is under the Sunday, March 22nd. Let's affirm that together. Strength is a degree of spiritual awareness, a God-centered attitude which generates qualities of durability, stability, dependability, courage, and confidence. And our church affirmation, Unity East Church is a dynamic, prosperous church that welcomes and supports its members and guests spiritually. To the best of my ability, I prayerfully support this talent and treasures to keep this church viable, wonderful. And the events, okay. Now we've got a Good Friday service coming up. I had asked you last year, did you want one? And you uh, said yes. And so we had a wonderful Good Friday service last year. And what we did was we spoke this last set, uh, seven words of Jesus on the cross. And we had volunteers from the congregation so this year, I said, well, that's wonderful. I will speak one of the words if necessary. But if not, uh, I know we have some very powerful individuals in our congregation. We've already got two of the words that have been uh, taken. Uh, Walter, did you want my God? My God, why has thou forsaken me? Okay. And Carolyn's got, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. So that leaves, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Do I have a volunteer? Now we got materials. Judy, wonderful. And as you're researching this material, you will see how it will bless you in your life because there's no accidents, just incidents to take you to another level in your understanding. Wonderful. And the second one is today, you will be with me in paradise. Carol, okay, good. Now, woman, behold thy son, behold thy mother. Okay, you know, no mothers want to speak about mother. <laughs> okay, we'll put that one on hold. I <laughs> will call someone. Uh, what about I thirst? Anybody thirsting for something? Okay. It is finished. All right. Well, anyway, think about that, and uh, we've got a, a little while before Good Friday, uh, because next week is uh, Palm Sunday, and I heard that uh, I have, I'm off next Sunday is the fifth Sunday, okay? I'm off every fifth Sunday, which means I have four weeks in the year that I'm off. So I've been asked to speak at Godland Unity uh, because their minister passed, and they're having other ministers come in and sustain them until they get their regular minister. Uh, and they've already chosen him. The previous minor, minister already uh, announced what he, who he wanted to come in after him. So that's how structured his church was. So Guy Lynch will be coming in uh, to be the minister at Godland Unity. But I will be there speaking next week. And I've got uh, asked a very powerful speaker to come in here. And that's Reverend Bracey. Uh, you've met her and she sat here about two weeks ago. A very powerful lady. I've been here when she did workshops. Uh, you will be uplifted. But then what I heard was, and I know this is not true, that when the minister is away, the congregation said, well, mm, I can play hooky today. <laughs> Have you heard that rumor? <laughs> uh, that is not here because we want to represent the church and bless this person and be blessed by her message. Here I am. Okay? So you all come. <laughs> I'll be watching the streaming next week. <laughs> okay. Okay, good Friday. We've got that at 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock on April 3rd. Uh, then on April 12th, we've got a town hall meeting, so if you want to 
uh, voice your opinion on things or some things you want to talk about, we'll have that opportunity. Uh, second uh, and fourth Sunday, Edgar Casey, And third Sunday, blood pressure screening. So look at that. Uh, at the bottom it says all board actions um, um, February 11th immediately take effect. Uh, any authorized events, expenses for that purpose of reimbursement or uh, addition to tides must be submitted to the original, uh, with the original receipts within 30 days to Shirley Nichols, who just decided to come back and visit us from Hawaii. <laughs> and Mike. <laughs> Wonderful. Did would, you want to say something about that? Did you enjoy yourselves? Uh, beautiful place. All right. Welcome back. It is Money Tree Sunday. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way to March. Okay, well, let's bless our money trees, those that remember to bring them in. <laughs> you can bring them in next week. We'll still be here. Okay. Place them in your left hand. Okay. And uh, it adds up over time. Okay, we still got the parking lot venture. And we need to get that taken care of because we want to get that parking lot resurfaced this spring while the price may not have gone up too much, if at all. We maybe $600 away from our mark. So, you know, uh, look at that. And there's a um, chart outside the door here with where we are and a box where you can put the, those checks when you get your income tax back or you hit the lottery or whatever you, you know, not saying that you, whatever. <laughs> Father, Mother, everything, God, we say thank you for the opportunity to give because we know as we open up and give we know that the cycle is that we are open to receive because the giving and the receiving is all the same thank you because we are blessed in the name and nature of Christ Jesus we pray amen, amen. all right <laughs> wonderful now we uh Ah, let's see. Okay, um, Greg was doing a class on Tuesdays, uh, but he finished that class this a week uh, on uh, healing. And he says he might do it in the evening for those that are working or may want to come in and bring a friend because it's a very powerful class. And then on Wednesday, we're doing Keep a True Lent, uh, and we meet at 11 o'clock to 12.30. Uh, and then after that, Tai Chi is from one to two, and I love that. It just gives me a chance to move around and open up and, and heal, you know, and stretch. And uh, we have a fun group. We laugh a lot and, and um, all that. And on Thursday, we will be starting. We were supposed to start it last week, but we were not finished with um, be, think Beyond Positive Thinking. We wanted to get that last bit in there, teaching us how to meditate. And it takes us through three phases of meditation. But uh, I'm practicing that at home now. Uh, but anyway, this week we will start on open your mind to prosperity. And we need to know, uh, we talk about it all the time, but do we need, to, we, we got old ideas about money. We got old ideas about our health. We got old ideas about all of that. But the first chapter is open your mind to prosperity. Cleanse your mind for prosperity. Create your prosperity mentally first in writing. Create your prosperity mentally first in pictures. Then create your prosperity mentally first through the spoken word. And then the secret of permanent prosperity. That's what we're striving for. And then it goes into uh, chapter two and on. So we will be starting that this week at two o'clock uh, on Thursday. Now, I um, uh, have auditioned last week for another play, and so we're rehearsing on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So, uh, yeah, and we've got several of our members here that are in that play also. So we'll let you know more about it later on. Uh, I have to get my tap dancing shoes back out. <laughs> but anyway, that's good. That's all good.
Okay, is that everything that we need to talk about? Oh, our financial information, remember, Unity Church requires about $2,000 per week in order to function, and uh, donations received March 15th is to be announced. Our uh, treasurer, bookkeeper, everything lady was away for a while, recuperating, praise God. <laughs> And first timers, please sign our guest register in the foyer so we can know who you are and keep you abreast of what's going on here. And members, if you're uh, incapacitated or ill or in the hospital, please let me know. Because I went to the hospital to visit um, Pat Wilcox uh, Sunday after church. And is she here today? Okay, no, she's still mending her net. And as I was walking out, here comes another lady. Uh, I said, uh, wait a minute, what, what are you doing here? Oh, my husband's up on the seventh floor. I said, oh, okay, nobody told me. Well, it just happened. But anyway, so uh, I turned right around. We went up, and the, and the young man said, what are you doing here? I just got here. How'd you hear about it? Well, it's not a secret. <laughs> <You know? laughs> We're here to uplift and keep you uh, in prayer. You know? So anyway, that worked. They're here today. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big pardon? Oh, she's out. Uh -huh. we, uh, they had to do a procedure. Her blood dropped. And she was just, you know, and then there was uh, other things. But anyway, uh, I went and saw her Sunday. And when I called on Tuesday, they said she went home yesterday. I said, oh, oh, prayer, prayer, prayer. So she's mending her net, okay? Every day, every way, I am better and better. For only God's good happens to me and through me. Once more with choreography. Every day, in every way, I am better and better. For only God's good happens to me and through me. Got it, by God, you got it. Now memorize my truth. Um, I spoke this to someone and said, well, I've never heard that before. But you've been here several times. But know that there's nothing, I, let's do it together. There's nothing I can't be, nothing I can't do, nothing I can't have. I am guided. I do have the power. The universe, God, is conspiring on my behalf. I am the creator and not the reactor of my life. The genius within me is released. I am now fulfilling my destiny. Thank you, God. And if you need prayer, we have prayer, uh, supporters that will meet you right here after church and pray with you. And please keep bringing in toiletry articles for the homeless staying in shelters uh, at local churches in Salvation Army. And we'll take that to them the last Monday of the month. So now, I would like for us, well, would you come up and share with us overcoming before we go into meditation? Is there a microphone here somewhere? <laughs> You're getting your exercise today. <laughs> okay. First, tell us who you are. My name's My name's Ryan. And where are you from? I was born in Hazel Park. Oh. I live at Clinton Township, uh, Harper Square Apartments, right over there, on the dirt road. And you've been looking at the church, and you decided to come in and see yeah, what we're about. I've seen uh, the weather sign and uh, I drove past it uh, probably every day this week. Ah. I've seen the 10 o'clock surrender is not giving up. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Share with us the word for today. I am an overcomer. God has given me everything I need to succeed. What an empowering idea. The power of God is in me. It's greater than my difficulty. Any difficulty. I tap into the guidance of God to navigate unexpected barriers. Once with God, I can overcome any challenge and achieve any goal. 
The love of God in me brings harmony into any chaotic situation. The strength of God in me provides me the will and energy to overcome any circumstance. My faith gives me patience, insight, discernment, and positive expectations. I use my imagination to envision the best outcomes. Through the power of God in me, I achieve my dreams, I prevail, I am an overcomer. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Ah, thank you. <laughs> All right. And since we're in the Lenten season, it just so happens to work for the day in the Lenten booklet that we have in our bookstore called Learning to Let Go, Lent 2015. And the word for today is overcoming also. So are there any accidents? Okay, so there's something that someone needs to overcome. And it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, when South Africa triumphantly overcame apartheid, it did so largely because of the courageous leadership of Nelson Mandela. Mandela was in prison for 27 years, many of them in an excruciating small jail cell on Robben Island. Now, despite this confinement and the mental and emotional strain and humiliation Mandela claimed that he was always free. Think about that. When you're in those kind of circumstances to claim that I am free, maybe boxed in, you know, in prison, but my mind, my spirit is free. Like the Apostle Paul, he had learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. As Paul proclaimed, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Is that not? Okay, Philippians 4.13. Now we may not face the magnitude of trials endured by Nelson Mandela or Apostle Paul. However, their overcomings can inspire us to re and remind us that the Christ within is more powerful than any challenge we may confront. We can always choose, choose, choose to be spiritually free. Amen. Yes. Isn't that powerful? We are overcomers. Let me hear you say that. I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. Okay, I don't believe that. Say it again. Oh, you're getting better. One more time for the Holy Spirit. Oh, that was it. That was it. Thank you. All right. Wonderful. So now let us prepare for meditation by singing our Lord's Prayer.
as we gently close our eyes and take in a deep, rich, rich, relaxing breath, breathing in through your nostrils very slowly and feel, sense, know the air coming in through your nostrils up to the top of your head and then just moving gently throughout your body tempo, relaxing you with each breath. And my talk today is about surrendering. And this morning in my meditation, a song came to me that we used to sing at our traditional churches. Hear these words as you breathe in more and more. All to Christ Jesus, I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence I daily live. Taking another deep breath. Relaxing the body more and more. For I surrender all. I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. And as we turn in prayerful meditation, allow me to be your ambassador to speak the words for you as you take in another breath, life breath, slower than the first, holding it, holding it, and slowly releasing it through your parted teeth, your parted lips. Just let your shoulders slump down, let them relax. We tend to walk around or sit with our shoulders up high, thinking we're carrying a whole load of stuff on them. But right now, just let them drop. And as you do that, feel that release going down through your upper chest and upper back at the same time, down your arms, all the way to your fingertips. As I affirm, I am blessed with a greater realization that I am beloved of God. I am endowed with God's spirit and therefore I am vitally alive. Taking in another breath, relaxing the body even more hearing these words as your own. My body is charged with an ever-renewing current of divine life, which strengthens me. My mind is quickened with a, a new concept of prosperity, a fresh, realization that God is the source of all blessings and supply. My heart, my heart is filled with peace. My heart is filled with compassion and understanding. I am bountifully blessed. Thank you, God. My life is full of promise. And as I celebrate life with joy and thanksgiving, I am awakened to a new awareness of the wonderful triumphant spirit that God has given me, the new wonderful triumphant spirit that God has placed in me. 
I am now and forever one with God. The goodness of God. The peace of God. The grace of God and the oneness with his love. Knowing that God's presence is ever with me, ever within me, leads me to an understanding that I am God's beloved. And as the music plays, I surrender all. This is a time to just let go of any thoughts that will come up to you right now that you may need to be forgiven for, or you may need to forgive someone for something. Any hurt words, any things that you've done in life, they're all in the past. And they call it past because it has already happened and it's over with. So now, right now, we open ourselves and surrender to the allness of God by saying, thank you, God, for me. And I release and let go of anything that is not like you. Perfect, whole, complete. I surrender all. And in the silence, give it up. Let it go. It's not yours anymore. No more worrying about it. You can't fix it. Let it go. God can. Thank you. I am free. Thank you. And as we take in another deep breath with power, big breath, and releasing it with force. <sighs> Letting go of all that stuff that you have lovingly released into the universe, into God's loving care. We open our eyes and sing our congregational response. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. I'd like to share with you a song, and all the words are from the Course in Miracles. So hear them, accept them. For this is a service of healing today. Into his presence. Surrounded. 
surrounded I am surrounded by the love of God by the love of God let me be still let me be still and listen to the truth and listen to the truth let Every voice, let every voice, but God's be still in me, but God's be still in me. Let me remember, let me remember, I am one with God. My brother, peace to my brother, who is one with me, who is one with me. Let me remember, let me remember what my purpose is, what my purpose is. Let all the world, let all the world be blessed with peace through me. Be blessed with peace through me. There is, is one light, light and that I share with him. him. I, I am sustained by the love of God. All that I give is given to myself. I thank my Father for his gifts to me. Let me remember there is no will but God's is with me forever I am saved let me remember there is no love but God's I will step back and let him lead the way into his presence would I enter for I am surrounded by the love of God. Let me be still and listen to the truth. Let every voice but God's be still in me. Let me remember I am one with God, peace to my brother, who is one with me. Let me remember what my purpose is. Let all the world be blessed with peace through me. with peace through who? You forgot already? <laughs> through me. <laughs> me, me, me. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, invocation prayer, please. 
together. It's on those sheets. Love is a mini splendor thing. Here we go. Together. We are now in the presence of pure being, immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed Spirit. In thy divine wisdom now, erase our mortal limitations, and from thy pure substance of love, bring into manifestation our world according to thy perfect law. Amen. Talk title today is Surrender is Not Giving Up. Now, James, the fourth chapter, the seventh and eighth verse, it says, Submit yourself therefore to God, and God will draw near to you. Submit, according to Webster says, to present to others for consideration, maybe a proposal, a plan, a job application, or something of that nature, to yield to the control or power of another. Submit, to give in, but not give up. Now, surrender, still according to Webster, it says to give up the possession of yield to another on compulsion, and to give up or abandon. You know, like if you're in a battle and you take the white flag out and you wave it, you're giving up because you have been defeated for that moment, but you're not giving up totally. Uh, and the last the definition is to give oneself up. Now, the word surrender to many people means giving up. But spiritually, it means just the opposite. So if God is your co-pilot, switch seats. Okay? Remember the sign that we had on the license plates and everything? God is my co-pilot. You know, that means that uh, he's following after me. What do I know? <laughs> According to what God knows and is. So let's switch seats ah, and consent to let God direct your life. Let is the big word here. Let God direct your life. So if your life is not going the way you would like it to, it could be that you are trying to force an outcome that may not be the best one for you. Now, the biblical truth is just as true today as it was over 2,000 years ago. And what did the word say? What did Jesus say to God? Not my will, but thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will. Because in my humanness, I only know so much. But God's will is eternal. So not my will, but God's will be done in and through my life. So rather than get upset about things that are not going right or not going the way you <laughs> see it in your humanness, take a moment today and just stop and turn the situation over to God. What are you going through? Stop trying to fix it. Because we heard in the word, I of myself can do nothing, but the spirit of God within me can do what? All things. So stop. What's that thing we used to stop, drop, and roll? Well, that's different. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, the kid. <laughs> He gave you divine ideas or insight. <laughs> oh, it's good to laugh. <laughs> he gave us divine ideas or inspirations in the first place. What God wills, God also fulfills. What did I say? What 
God wills, God also fulfills. I used to have a personal to-do list, and I still have it. And since I was working on this lesson for today, uh, but that list kept getting longer and longer and longer, and this gave me some anxiety now. So now I have a God's to-do list. Okay? I wrote that just this week. And for several days, there was nothing on that page. I'm thinking, no. What am I going to do if God does it? Hmm. So anyway, uh, this morning I wrote, uh, God, help me to be all that you created me to be so that I can be the best that I can be and share with others. Lord, help me to be the love I am. And I forget what the third one is, but yeah. Can you hear that? Those are a little deeper than just bringing me a car, give me some money, I need somebody to keep me company, you know, the things that we can work on ourselves through divine inspiration, but yeah. So the more you surrender, the more successful you become. You surrender your own will and you let let God's will be done. That was the biggie. That's what I'm saying. I had my to-do list. Every day I'm doing things and checking them off and all that. But, okay. What does God do? Check with God first. And then move. Surrendering is not giving up. Quite the contrary. contrary. It is letting divine order take place and reorganizing that God's will is being done. Divine order. Now, Catherine Ponder in her book, The Healing Secrets of the Ages, had some affirmations in there that I thought were quite helpful. It helps us change our thinking from what was not working to new opportunities by saying to yourself often, God's will for me is supreme good. God's will for me is health, wealth, and happiness. I am willing to do the good will of God, which is the open door to fulfillment of all my dreams. I am willing. God's good will manifests in my life now. God's good will manifest in my life now. These are affirmations, you know. We in unity use affirmations and denials to change things, our old way of thinking and acting and reacting, to the newness because this is a new thought organization. God's good will manifests in my life now. By surrendering your life to God, you are placing your trust in the one power in the universe with the knowledge that you are surrendering your will to the greater will of God. Now, by inviting God to be an active participant in your life, you are letting, there's that word again, let, God be God in every aspect of your life. You are letting God be God in your personal life, in your business life. You are letting God be God, bringing divine plans to the big things and also the little things in your life to help you live a fulfilling life. If we're still here, there's still something for us to do. There's still some people that we are to meet and greet and share the love that we are, share the wonderfulness that we are with them, but we have to call it forth and let it be within ourselves. Let our light shine. Let our light shine. So, you know, when you go up and try and proselytize a, a person, you know, they was, oh, you know, the barriers go up. But as your light shines, they'll come to you and say, ooh, what is it about you? It's just something about you. I don't know what it is. What's going on with you? Whatever it is, I want some of it. You know, 
and then you can share with them who and what God is in, to, and through you. Yes. So if your life is not going along the way you would like it to, it could be that you're trying to force an outcome. Repeating that. And that is draining your physical strength. I know I'm talking to somebody. Hello. Can I get an amen on that? Hello. So when you try to force something over and over again, it is like an ant, not an auntie, an ant <laughs> trying to push on the Hoover Dam. Can you get that picture? It causes your vitality to drain and wane. So, but the vitality of God never wanes. I often use the illustration that May, many of us are running around like the Energizer Bunny, but on a rundown battery, no longer connected to our source. I carry around a cell phone. I'm sure you've heard of those. Does, it, does everybody have one? Who does not have a cell phone? Millie, you don't have a cell phone? Bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we accept the idea for a cell phone, but how we sometimes struggle with the idea concerning ourselves. When we surrender to God, we connect again with our source, and the essence of God permeates our soul, and we are one with the pure, endless energy and absolute knowledge and wisdom that we need to guide us to our next step. Because when we enter life, we don't get the whole book, you know, okay, when you this age, you're gonna, this is going to happen to you. When you get five, you're gonna, this is going to be going on in your life. When you get 35, you're going to have met this child, and, you, and you're going to have married this wonderful person, or you, you're going to be broke up three times with folks, you know. We don't get a map for our lives. So we're taking it one step at a time. But that one step lets God know that we've tuned into the divine idea that God has given us, and we're moving in that direction for the fulfillment. Our body, mind, and soul is in tune with God's limitless energy and vitality. And each time we turn to God through our prayer and meditation. Do you know we're praying all the time? Every time you speak, you're praying. Because you being co-creator, when you send it out into the universe, you just created something. So what are you speaking? I talked to someone yesterday on the phone, and, and they were not in unity, but they're coming. Uh, but every word, other word they were saying, oh, I am, you know, and it, a poor this and I this. oh no 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 we have not met yet but let me stop you now I don't even want it this in my head much less in your head let's rethink this you know but anyway uh, there's power in the spoken word and we reach new heights of awareness and endless energy and we soar higher than we ever thought possible for we have touched God and as in our opening prayer, to repeat again in James 4, 7, 8, submit yourself, therefore, to God, and God will draw near to you. My friends, when we surrender, you cooperate with the sacred, almighty power of God in your life. The goodness of God is something to be reflected upon in every thought, that you think, and in every action that you take. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. But it's a thought first, is that not so? And then we take an action behind that thought. God is waiting to help you right now. And the best way that you can help yourself is by letting, there's that word again, letting God help you through surrender to the higher power. Where is this higher power? Within us and all around us. 
imminently and transcendent, everywhere evenly presence. There's not a spot that God is not. There's not a spot that God is not. There's not a spot that God is not. Okay? And that means omnipresent, doesn't it? Omni means all. Present means all presence everywhere at all times at the same time. God was in Hawaii last week. Right? <laughs> While God was here, <laughs> we were having service. So God is everywhere, evenly present, and he's omniscient, which means all intelligence and all power. And we call on his power all the time, don't we? Lord, give me strength. Have you ever spoke those words when you were going through something and you just couldn't do it yourself? Or you're doing something and you're running out of gas here, in your, not in your car, sometimes in the car. <laughs> yeah, because I went to, uh, what is it, uh, um, Toledo one time and was running out of gas and didn't have no money. Because I had drove, driven a friend there, and they jumped out of the car. I said, oh, I ain't got no money. I got to go visit my mother in Cleveland. I said, okay. I mean, in Toledo. Yeah, Cleveland. I said, oh, here. Just reached in my pocket and gave me money. And they got on the bus and went on. And I'm sitting there looking at the gauge, and it's saying, feed me, feed me, feed me. And I'm in Toledo, and I live in Detroit. Did I pray? Did I pray? I said, God. My God, oh, I really got serious. God of all the heavens and the earth, <laughs> the Alpha and the Omega. And yet, you know, I'm from a Pentecostal church, so I, I went there. The Alpha and the Omega, you know. I said, okay, God, get me home. Put that bad boy in drive, drove all the way home, and had enough to get to the gas station. God is as instant as we are. God is as instant as I am. Okay? My friends, when you surrender, you cooperate with the sacred, almighty power of God in your life. It seems somewhat complicated, doesn't it? To understand that, because we keep forgetting that we're God's creation and that he moves, lives, and has his being in and through us. So you begin to glimpse the truth. Everything in the universe is run by law. God has made these laws complex for a reason, challenging us to go beyond the simple is the way he gets us to perceive this world in a different way, the right way. Now, the reason we have challenges is because we do not see that everything that is or occurs is the product of the work of God. Everything operates according to the laws that he has set down. So our problems are a matter of misperception of the situation. Not a real, not real at all. Misfortunes or lack of opportunity are merely our misperception. The true nature of the forces of God is trying to manifest in your life. He doesn't put things in your hand. He sets the path before you and you have to walk in it. Challenges are God's way of motivating us to expand our minds, change our perceptions, and develop our spirits. Challenge is God's way of calling you to stretch, to risk and push your limits. So when you have no challenges, you are miserable. You may feel miserable because you have no challenges. Purpose and risk are your a way of feeling alive. Now, when you are in your I am state, you will find that you have formed many of the problems in your life and that you are also the solution. Remember what I said, if God brings you to it, he'll see you through it, okay? 
God has also formed all the situations that you have power to perceive them as problems. Is this, what are you naming? Remember God gave us the naming power way back in Genesis? Is it a problem or is it a challenge or is it an opportunity? Okay. How you perceive them will determine how they manifest in the physical world. Because when God created the world, he created everything first in its imagination before it became physical and visible. Yeah, is it fair? Why not? If every time you ask for something, it just fell into your lap, you would not learn to work. If every time you shot a ball and it went in, you would have no motivation to improve. God takes no pleasure in making things too easy for you. You must learn to grow stronger in faith and in your imagination. God is our father, mother, everything God. Like any parent, he wants us, his children, to learn on lean on your own to be stronger and wiser. And if that means a few stumbles along the way, then the lessons will last a little longer. So it would behoove us to truly trust the supreme intelligence and surrender our will to the higher will of God. And in the words of C.S. Lewis, the more we attune to the spirit of God and let God lead, guide, and direct our path, the more truly our higher selves we become. We're always changing because God made us. God created us in his image and likeness. And God created all the different people that you and I are intended to be. You can think about that one, aren't you? Are you the same person you were 10 years ago? Are you the same person you were 30 years ago? We're constantly changing. God is there motivating us to that change. And when challenges come up, it's just another ch opportunity for us to call for it, that spirit of God within us to see us through it. Because if God brings you to it, you'll see you through it. Okay? So I lovingly surrender my will and to thy will, dear God. And I thank you for your endless help along the way. And may God richly bless and keep each of you on your way today. Amen. Amen. <laughs> richly. <laughs> All right. This is our opportunity to give. And it's a blessing to give also. Because as we give, we know that honoring the law of giving and receiving. So if you'll take your love offering and place it in your left hand and massage it, put your energy in it because everything is energy. Our breath is energy, our thoughts are energy, our bodies are energy, and our money is energy also. So affirming together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have all that I give and all that I receive. And so it is.
blessing these love offerings and blessing each person that has given today from the crown of their head to the very tippings of their faith. We say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Do we have a first timer here today? Yes. Okay. Won't you? Let's bless him. First name, Ryan. Ryan. Ryan, we love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we behold the Christ in you. Together. Ryan, we bless you. We love you. We appreciate you. And we behold the Christ in you. Give him a hand. And here's a gift pack. All right. All right, let's sing our peace song. Bicycles. <laughs> Warm them up. This way, Mary. Are we all connected? All right. Ready, set, now there is peace on earth and it has begun with me. Now there is peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God as creator. All are we now? We walk with each other in perfect harmony. Now, peace begins with me, and this is the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous heart. Take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Now there is peace for her and it has begun with me. Thank you, God, for this day. And thank you for all the wonderful things that are going to happen today. Because we're in it. And we know that you go before us in making easy, smooth, successful, and joyous our way today. And we say together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is. Now hug somebody. Somebody. 
Yeah. <laughs>